Hi, I'm going to talk about polarity. So polarity simply means that atoms do not share their electrons equally when they come together in a covalent bond and share, share electrons. Um, so molecular polarity right here, notice I just said unequal sharing of electrons. So you recall covalent bonds, that's where electrons come and share electrons. Um, but truth is, sometimes those electrons aren't shared equally. Um, look at my video on bonding and polarity, and that will help, that will kind of give you a foundation of looking at individual bonds. This video is looking at molecules where we have a central atom and substituents, atoms surrounding it, um, to determine is that molecule polar or nonpolar. Um, so remember, polar um, simply means that there's a partial positive and a partial negative. That's why I put up here. Um, so here's my symbol. I'm using the lowercase delta D from the Greek alphabet. So there's a partial positive and partial negative. Now, um, remember, these are not a full on charge. For example, when I'm looking at like a sodium and it has a plus one charge that has a complete one plus charge. If I have, um, let's say, a hydrochloric acid and I put a partial positive, that means that it's only a fraction of that one plus charge. Okay, so the partial positive uh, means that it's not 100% one full charge, it's a percentage. Um, and that percentage, it just depends on the polarity of the, um, of the molecule. Um, so because there is this partial positive and negative, these molecules slightly conduct. Um, so for um, covalent compounds, we say that they don't conduct. However, there is an exception, polar covalent compounds. So compounds that don't share equally, there's going to be an electron density on one side that's greater than the other, that partial positive and partial negative, they slightly conduct. So this is an exception that covalent compounds, if they're polar, can slightly conduct. Now, I have two big takeaways. Um, sometimes polarity is a little ambiguous um, and it's hard for students to pin down. I have two really quick takeaways for you that when you look at a molecule, how you can determine if it's polar or not. First, you've got to draw the Lewis dot structure. After you draw that Lewis dot structure, you are looking for lone pairs. If there are lone pairs, done. It's polar. It's a polar molecule. Now, there are two exceptions to this. Um, so you have memorized your Vesper chart. Um, you know all of the shapes, their names, the angles. Um, from that, that Vesper chart, there are two exceptions. In the five electron domain, the bipyramidal um, electron geometry, the molecular geometry linear, that is going to be nonpolar, and it has lone pairs on it. Look at this. We've got one, two, three, four, five electron domains. Um, if you're picturing this, okay, the X atoms in the middle, you got a Y up here and a Y down here. And then in a triangle pattern, you have one, two, three electron domains. Well, those three electron domains, they're going to cancel each other out for polarity. So overall, this is going to be a nonpolar molecule. The second exception is when we have six electron domains, octahedral, square planar. So on this one, let's count electron domains, one, two, three, four, five, six, four bonds and two lone pairs. So picture this with me. We've got our X atom, central atom. There's a lone pair on the top and a lone pair on the bottom. And then in a square pattern, there's one, two, three, four Y atoms. So this lone pair on top and lone pair on bottom, those cancel each other out. So even though there's lone pairs, this is going to be a nonpolar molecule. Um, now, if there are no lone pairs, okay, no lone pairs, they're all bonds. The second thing that you look for is symmetry, if it's symmetrical. And what I mean by that is simply, are the atoms all the same? Are all the substituent atoms surrounding that central atom the same? If they're the same, if they're the same, it doesn't matter if it's an individual polar or nonpolar bond. And again, look at my video on polar or nonpolar bonds. Um, it doesn't matter if the individual bonds are polar or nonpolar. If it, they are all the same atom, if it's symmetrical, then it's nonpolar. So if there's lone pairs, polar. If it's symmetrical, all the same atom around that central atom is nonpolar. So let me give you some examples. Over here in blue, I wrote down the molecules that I would like to work for you. I also have another video with additional examples. So if you feel like you need some more examples, great go ahead and, and watch some more examples and, and you'll get really good at this as you practice. Okay, so let's start with ammonia. I always begin with my Lewis dot structure. Okay, 
So number one, I'm looking for long pairs. Number two, I'm looking for symmetry. Well, this has a long pair right there. It's a polar molecule. Now, how to list the partial positive and negative? Those negative electrons sit really close to the atom, super negative because they're electrons. So the lone pairs get the partial negative. Um, by default, these hydrogens are going to be your partial positive. So like a partial magnet, you're going to have a slight negative side and a slight positive side. Okay, water, this is classic. You definitely have to see the example of water. So now I have two lone pairs and two bonds. This is a polar molecule. This whole top half is going to be your partial negative, and then the water down here, partial positive. Very, very important with our solubility. Um, okay, let's do methane. So I've got my carbon with four bonds, two hydrogen. Okay, two things I notice on this. Number one, no lone pairs. So then I go to my second question and I say, is it symmetrical? Are all the atoms attached to that central atom the same? And the answer is yes. So this is a nonpolar molecule. Nonpolar, sorry, let me write polar. So those electrons, the um, electron from the carbon and the hydrogen, they share equally. They're going to share equal amount of time between um, the two atoms. So there's no partial positive or negative, um, no charge on that at all. It's going to be nonpolar. Um, I do want to point out, even if I looked at one carbon bond, just that carbon-hydrogen bond right there, um, the electronegativity difference between those is so similar that it, uh, we would say that that's a nonpolar bond. Again, watch the video on, on polar, nonpolar bonds. Um, so that one, nonpolar. Next, let's look at um, our CH2F2. Okay, so there's my Lewis dot structure. I look at my central atom. Remember, lone pairs look at the central atom. Um, I look at the central atom, there's no lone pairs. Now, I do have lone pairs on the attached, the substituent atoms, doesn't matter. You're only looking at lone pairs on the central atom. Okay, so I look, no lone pairs on carbon. So second question, is it symmetrical? Are all the atoms identical? No, they're not. I have two hydrogen and I have two fluorine. Um, so this is going to be nonpolar because they don't have the, um, they're not sharing, they're not all sharing the same. These two share equally. Carbon fluorine, that is actually a very polar bond. Um, and so the fluorine, remember, greater electronegativity is attracting the electron that carbon is sharing toward itself. And the electron that carbon shared spends more time on the side of the fluorine than close to the, the carbon. And that's what makes it polar. Um, so this is going to be a partial negative on the side of the fluorines, and this is going to be a partial positive. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're saying, well, Mrs. Love, what if I just rewrote it? What if I made it look like this? I mean, that looks symmetrical. You have two fluorines on top and two, fluorines, or two hydrogens on the side. Remember, I drew it two-dimensionally, but in space, it's tetrahedral, it's three-dimensional. It's like a tripod. I have one, two, three legs, and then the top where the camera sits. Drawing it like this, I'd have my fluorine here, and then one leg fluorine, and then here's my hydrogen leg and my hydrogen leg. Well, I still have this whole half of the molecule is going to be polar. So even drawing it like this, it's still a polar molecule. A little bit harder to do your partial positive and negative because it's written 2D and it's really 3D in space. Um, but yeah, because it's not symmetrical, it is still going to be polar. Now, that would be true. I, I can hear my students asking these two follow-up questions. Well, what if you only had one fluorine? Yep, it's a polar molecule because they're not all the same. So partial negative and then those three right there, that's your partial positive. Um, and if we changed it, well, what if I had three fluorines and only one hydrogen? Still a polar molecule. This whole section, those three fluorines would give it the partial negative and that hydrogen would have the partial positive on it. If they're not all the same atom around that central atom, it's going to be polar. Okay, now let's take a look at um, four fluorines, okay? Now this is the question that's going to pop into your mind. You know that one bond between a fluorine and a carbon like this, that's a polar molecule or a polar bond, excuse me, because the fluorine's so electronegative, it hogs and attracts and pulls 
the electron from carbon toward itself and that electron spends more time on the side of the fluorine. So that we would say is a polar bond. But if I have all four bonds around carbon as a polar bond, it's symmetrical, it's nonpolar. And here's the reason why. The vectors of attraction cancel one another out. So the electrons are being attracted out toward the fluorines. So what happens is because they're all attracting equally uh, the same amounts outward, it cancels out and it becomes a nonpolar molecule. Now, this is a great question for any high level chemistry class. You could be asked um, the polarity of the bond and the polarity of the molecule. This is a nonpolar molecule because it's symmetrical, but it is a polar bond. Every single bond is polar, but because they're all pulling in equal and opposite directions, they cancel out and it becomes a nonpolar molecule. So quintessential question right there. Yes, that's a polar bond. Every single one of those are a polar bond, but when you put them all together, they cancel each other out, pulling in equal opposite directions. Nonpolar molecule. All right, um, let's do this I, I3 minus. So we're going to have iodine as our central atom, share an electron with the two substituent iodines that are attached. Remember the substituent atoms always get an octet. The central atom is what takes the hit. Um, iodine has seven valence electrons. It shared one, two. So we're going to have three, four, five, six, seven. But then it has a minus. So I'm going to put the extra electron right there. Okay, I see lone pairs around that central atom. So first thought is, polar molecule, but I go, oh wait, is this one of the exceptions? We've got one, two, three, four, five electron domains. So the electron geometry is bipyramidal, or bipyramidal trigonal, trigonal bipyramidal, sorry. <laughs> um, and two are bonds, three are lone pairs. Okay, that is one of my exceptions. This is nonpolar, the lone pairs cancel each other out. So again, picture this, iodine in the center. I've got iodine up top, iodine on the bottom, and then I've got one, two, three lone pairs. Those lone pairs are all on the same plane, so they cancel each other out. Um, so that's going to be nonpolar. All right, let's do an XeF4, a xenon tetrafluorate. So xenon, eight valence electrons, share an electron with each fluorine. Give our lone pairs on each fluorine. Okay, so xenon shared four electrons, had four electrons, two lone pairs left over. Let's count electron domains. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, the, the electron geometry is octahedral. The molecular geometry is square planar. I see lone pairs and so I'm thinking polar, but I go, wait, is this one of the exceptions? It's square planar. Xenon in the center, lone pair on top, lone pair on bottom, and then you've got one, two, three, four fluorines in a square. Um, so we're going to have the electron, the lone pair on top and bottom, they cancel each other out. So this is one of those exceptions. It is going to be non-polar, non-polar. Okay, let's do another one. Let's do a sulfur tetrafluoride. Sulfur has six valence electrons, is going to share an electron with each of the four fluorine atoms. Um, and so it has two electrons left over, at least a lone pair. So let's count electron domains. I've got one, two, three, four, five. Okay, trigonal bipyramidal for the electron geometry. Um, I have four bonds and one lone pair. So you'll recall that seesaw goofy shape name. Um, and I'm asking about polarity. Well, four bonds, one lone pair, one lone pair. Automatically, lone pair, that is going to be a polar molecule. So I'm going to put that partial negative next to the lone pair and everything else would be considered the partial positive. That's not one of my exceptions. I have that lone pair and so it's going to make it um, a polar molecule. So there you have it. On um, polarity of molecules, you're really looking for two things. After you write the Lewis dot structures, are there, does the central atom have lone pairs? Number one, and you only have those two exceptions, is going to be linear from trigonal bipyramidal and square planar from octahedral. So those two exceptions, 
for lone pairs. And then number two, is it symmetrical? Okay, if you need more practice, I have another video on practice. If you need to review bonds, review polarity of bonds. Okay, good work, thanks.